Intro music. Doctor. My name is James. My name is Joey. And this is the Brothers Padre. Hear that? That's the sound of the Padres winning <laughs> against the New York Mets in the wild card round. I'm still in shock. You're still a little bit in shock. Uh, I, ju- I just said to Joey, wait, how did we score six runs? I can't. Like, I, I, we just finished watching the game, and I, I honestly can't remember anything about uh, just, it. Just, it was so, so just dominating. Yeah, the Padres pitching dominated in the third game, with Joe, led by Joe Musgrove, finished by Robert Suarez and Joe Musgrove. My nerves are on fire. I Josh could, Hader. What did I say? Joe Musgrove. Joe, <laughs> Whatever. Joe, Joe Musgrove, Musgrove, Robert Suarez, Josh Hader. I, earlier today, I said Taylor Rogers, so I'm improving. I'm improving. You are. You are. Luckily, you didn't say that embarrassing thing My on the podcast. My nerves are just shot. I couldn't eat dinner. I was just so... I'm, I still haven't eaten dinner. I'm still like buzzing like crazy i was expecting a padres collapse i think you and i have talked about previously how we were the whole season we're expecting the shoe to drop and we're just going to be eliminated from contention your beloved san diego padres went into queens and took out a 101 win team yes we did led by a pitching staff of jacob de and max scherzer and besides game two Padres dominated. Padres had unlikely heroes come up out of nowhere. And I think we showed that we not only are the better team, but when we're firing, we're very dangerous to whomever we face. Exactly. And uh, if you follow me on Twitter, I've been retweeting like a madman, just tweeting that crazy. But um, Joe Musgrove is a legend. He was a legend and is a legend and will become more legendary maybe in this postseason. If he never had to buy a beer before in San Diego, yeah, I, I he might never have to pay for another thing ever again in San yeah. Diego after the night. But <laughs> should we recap? Yes. This episode might be a little crazy because we're still processing. You, J- James and I really haven't. I feel like we're still in this like. Hangover is the wrong way to term, but like we, just, we haven't processed it. I think we still haven't. Well, we didn't start the game. We didn't start this podcast for you want if you want to know until after we saw Bob Melvin's post game interview. Yeah, because he's our skipper. He and so we wanted to see what he had to say about some things. We'll get into it. But the first game of the series this Friday, October seventh, the Padres won seven to one. We were against a has been pitcher named Max Scherzer. <laughs> I mean, people said he was good. I've seen no evidence of that <laughs> on Friday. We hit four home runs off him. All of our runs came off of home runs. Grisham, home run. Machado, home run. And because I'm still amped, I can't remember the other two. <laughs> Profar. Profar, yeah, I wrote down everything. Here it goes. So, <laughs> Machado, Grisham, Profar. And Bell, of yes. course. Bell's a big one. That was the first one. Yeah. That was the, oh my god, that was the first one. First inning, two run home run. Oh my goodness, yeah. So, but Hugh Darvish, seven innings, one earned run, six hits, four Ks, zero walks. You would think that'd be the most dominating pitching performance of of the playoffs, but yep. you'd be wrong. And Scherzer just didn't have it. I mean, he's a thousand years old. I mean. But the get next game, the Mets started Jacob Degrom, who is a good pitcher. Yeah, and and we lost three to seven. And to be fair, Snell uh, pitched th- three innings, four hits, two earned runs, six balls, base on balls, five strikeouts. He fell into the classic Snell trap where he just overthink everything and threw a ton of pitches. And also, the umpire refused to call strikes. Just, just the whole game. Yep. And now he was making bad calls 
throughout the game for both teams, yep. but it just seemed like all the bad calls for the Padres were on strike threes. Yep. But we can't make excuses. We ended up losing th- three to seven. Uh, Jacob Degrom was Jacob Degrom. He six innings, eight strikeouts. We did hit um, get him for two runs. Grisham hit another solo shot. Hmm, spoiler. <laughs> is, he, is he pretty good this series? You know what? He's been he's he's been a surprise. <laughs> and that leads to today's game, mm-hmm. elimination game, final. Game of the series, Joe Musgrove against Chris Bassett. Yeah, I was going to say the Bassett Hound and make a joke out of it, but, you know, whatever. Chris Bassett. And Joe Musgrove. Pure dominance. Yeah. We ended up winning six to nothing. Musgrove pitched seven innings. He gave up one hit. Walked one, struck out five, and pitched 86 pitches for seven innings of that kind of... It was pure dominance. Uh, Grisham got an RBI. Nola got the first two RBIs on a uh, bases-loaded single. Soto drove in two RBIs, and Machado drove in an RBI today. It, It was... And Kim... Walked three times. The bottom of our the last three guys of our lineup were the most productive pieces of the entire series. Yep. And Trent Grisham, man, unbelievable. We 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 said it before in our last game. Every playoff series, there's always somebody that comes from behind yep. that you don't expect. And you know what? This last three games, all is forgiven. I don't care how bad of a year Trent has had. The man turned it up at this point, and Joe Musgrove just just the, the man was awesome. Domination, domination. Trent Grisham, current batting average over three games is five hundred. Has a six six seven on base percentage. That means he's on base sixty six percent of the time in these three game series. He's slugging 1.250, combining for an OPS of 197 with two, getting RBI in every single game, and two home runs against two of the best pitchers of our generation. Trent Grisham is a different man, changes batting stance, and my goodness, am I ready to eat? Like, we've talked about Trent Struck. I I even talked to you that maybe he shouldn't have been on the roster, and I'm... I'm an idiot because Trent Trent changed his stance to 2020 stance, and he. I mean, you, you said it best. If there's an MVP of a series, he's the MVP. Yeah, I haven't said it yet. I've said it. Sorry, off my bad. <laughs> I, I ruined your shine. I stole your thunder. It's all right. I'm a thunder stealer. Oh, it's okay. It's all right. Yeah. But no, I, I said if there was an MVP. Apparently, they don't pick MVPs for this series. Yeah. If there was an MVP, it would be Trent Grisham. I mean, they'd probably give it to Joe Musgrove, but. Yeah, uh, Joe Musgrove and you Darvish dominated. Yeah, and on, honestly, even the second game, Mus, um, Snell only gave out two runs. Marhone had a really bad seventh inning where he struck out two guys, and they were called balls. So yep. they ended up scoring four runs against us in that inning. Again, can't make excuses. We lost, but we came back, and Joe Musgrove took the mound, and. And unfortunately, instead of talking tomorrow about just how dominant it is, the the Mets have a real whiner baby on their team. And do you want to explain what happened, Joey? Yep. So, in the seventh, sixth inning, uh, Joe Musgrove starts the inning, and out comes Buck Showalter. And Buck Showalter appeals to the umps, and the umps... Say, yeah, talk to you. And I, 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 watchers, you have no idea what's happening. And so, what happens is Buck Showalter is asking the umps, Hey, I think something's fishy with Joe Musgrove. Can you check his glove? Can you check his hat? And can you check your his ears? Joe Musgrove had sweaty, shiny ears the whole game. He sweats a lot. And 
So it's not that surprising for Padres fans, but Buck Showalter convinced the umpires to make, to basically accuse Joe Musgrove of cheating and to make check to see if there's anything unusual on his hat, glove, face, and ears. So Joe Musgrove gave over his hat, his glove, and ears for inspection on national television in the sixth inning. And uh, nothing was found. And it made rub the Padres really, really wrong. May Machado was like, what are we doing here? Musgrove gave some... He didn't give the real... He didn't actually give an obscene gesture, but everyone knows what that gesture means yeah. to the Mets dugout. Some chirping between Myers and Vogelbach because you accused him of cheating. And the fact of the matter was, he wasn't. And Joe Musgrove said, and after after the game, is like, you better be sure. And you better make... Effectively, I'm paraphrasing. You better be sure that your people are not also doing the same thing. Because... The fact of the matter is that Joe Musgrove was pitching with more spin. And as Eno Saris of The Athletic points out, it's not uncommon in, say, a high-pressure, high-adrenaline thing like the playoffs, people get pitched better. That's not unusual whatsoever. And it's also not even... he wasn't even It wasn't even season highs for him. So it wasn't like he was blowing out the, the spin rate. And also, they didn't find anything. So he didn't cheat. And just Buck was trying to gamesmanship, trying to get in his head. And guess what? Joe Musgrove threw six and then the seventh. Like I said, 86 pitches, only allowed two base runners. Domination. And uh, I think a little bit of like, if you bet, you, you better, I mean, Gary Cohen of the, the Mets, the Mets broadcast said it too, is like, it reeked of desperation. And you better be 100% sure that's what's happening. There's And it wasn't, he was fine. And uh, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be annoying as people have said that people are gonna talk about that over how dominant he was, but I do still think it makes Buck look horrible, it makes the Mets look super desperate to try anything when their team was just dominated. Bob Suarez came in and dominated. Hater came in and dominated. They were taken to task and they were not up for the battle and they are a 101 win team and they were taken out and they couldn't handle that fact specifically buck could not handle it and said and got mad and and tried to and said later like there's obvious reasons for do this just because he has shiny ears he's a big italian guy okay and he has big old ears and it's cold as heck and andrew mccushion said it's not uncommon for people to put icy hot on their ears during cold games. And, you know, it's it it was And you are and even and so no one said that was that thing. Apparently pitchers and hitters alike will mix Vaseline and Icy Hot together and put it on parts that are gonna be exposed and cold. Yeah. Uh people do it on their nose, feel this to put it on their nose. A, it makes your fingers very, very slippery, so you don't want to have that on there. And B, they have seen, because Mets fans are going to be complaining about this the entire time. It's yep. not their team's fault. They suck today. Right. It's Musgrove. So all they, they found one image of him um, grabbing an ear in between pitches. One. If he was cheating regularly, as they thought would, there would be, at, between every pitch, you'd see him grow for his yeah. ear. Joe Musgrove adjusts his hat every in between every pitch and pulls it back, pulls it forward. That's just like his little tick, and he grabbed his ear at one point because it was cold. And the thing is, it's so frustrating. A Padres dominated, and the Mets couldn't handle it, and that's why they're not champions. They spent more money than— Highest payroll in baseball. Highest payroll in baseball. They spent more money than the Dodgers, and they lost— and you know what? The Dodgers have more grace than this. Wow. Yeah. And you never give them compliments. <laughs> oh, no. I mean, the Dodgers are still evil and demonic, but <laughs> at least they know how to go out with grace. True. They just have to go sacrifice, you know, uh, more livestock next year. Right, right, right. I uh, I think 
obviously that moment's going to be sticking in sports fans' minds, and it it is a it is an interesting story. Um, but I think the Padres still hit four home runs against Scherzer. Yeah, the Padre Grisham still hit a home run against Grom. The Padres still load the bases, and they. And the Mets did not take the bottom of the order seriously, and they drove in all the runs. Austin Noah's batting four, uh, uh, 444 in this series. That is incredibly good. Um, Hassan Kim is batting 250, but he has um, four runs this series. He had a double, several hits, tons of walks. He was always on base. He stole base early in the, in the third game. That led to a run. Hassan Kim, Austin Nolan, Trent Grisham made made the Mets like, like they're pesky and they just they Mets didn't respect them. And they the Padres seven eight nine hitters paid made them pay. Yeah. And, and also yeah. also between before all you, the Mets fans, the Padres had ten hits this game. Yeah. Maybe look to your own pitching before you look start to blame others. Yeah. Totally. I mean, it's that's. I. I mean, I. The meme is the Mets collapse, but I. I they hundred percent collapse, and they went out like whiny little babies. Right, right. But the Potters are a good team. They're a very good team. If you any team that faced that Joe Musgrove today, would not have a good time. Any team that faced that you Darvish in Game One would not have a good time. So you have seven innings of just dominated baseball from two great pitchers, you will have a bad time. And and you all of a sudden have this new postseason legend in the making, Trent Grisham, come up to bat. You have Juan Soto. Oh, by the way, he still can get on base a ton. Oh, he can still do clutch hits from time to time. You have Manny Machado, who, oh, by the way, can still do clutch hits, by the way, can still hit the ball 159 miles an hour into the seats, right? Like, this is a team when right, no team should underestimate. Yes. This, and that's, I, I really do think that they thought the 789 team was just, 789 players were just like whatever. And they're not whatever. They're professional hitters. And they have, I mean, Krisha makes that the bottom of the order just explode. But, you know, I just, it, it was so awesome to see in the series. I, I'm just so stoked for our Padres to move on. Cause I just, I think, I think our team has been lacking consistent firepower. It's probably the best way to do it. Consistent denomina- de- domination, and just seeing in this series was just awesome to see. And I, I'm just man, oh man, I'm just so stoked. And we're gonna roll in. They're gonna fly to San Diego. Gonna take. Batting practice tomorrow in Petco Park, and they're going to drive up to L.A. on Tuesday. Love it. Love it. We're going to face the... Uh, um, it, we're going to face the... Our rivals up to five, the Los Angeles Doyers. And it's going to be... It's going to be a tough one. There's no way around it. But if this team... If that same team that just beat the Mets rolls into the LA, LA they're going to also have a tough time. If Snell can figure it out, they're going to have a tough time. So, James, I, any other thoughts about the series? Are you stoked? Are you happy? Are you, are you <laughs> happy? <laughs> no, Joey. I'm terribly disappointed. Just, I, I think of that Kobe Bryant tweet, right? It's a quote, like, we're not done. Business, we're not done. And I think it's right. You know, I... I'm so stoked we got a series win this year, but we're not done. We're not done. No, we're red hot. Our our hitters are hitting. Uh, another another thing we have to shout out. I know he went over four today, but can we give a special shout out to Will Myers defense at first base? Oh my goodness! There were some weird hit balls at first base today. One of them was a line drive that hit the bag. He jumped up to catch it and just came back down, touched. First base. The other one was a weird line drive he caught, got the out. The man is an amazing first base defender. Yeah. And he, I mean, we don't talk about Bell, but Bell drove the ball a bunch. He had that big homer in the first. And Myers, I mean, Myers scolded the ball three times today. 
So I just, you know, I, I think it's, and there is a lot to like, even about the people that didn't have like crazy, crazy games, you know? Like I said, Myers did not drive in a run today, but he saved at least two. Yep. His yep. defense throughout the last couple games has saved at least four runs. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Holy cow. Yeah. I mean, that's... In order to win playoff games, you have to play at that level, and the Padres did. The Mets are a 101-win team. They have some of the best pitchers in baseball, and they also have some really good hitters. And we won. The best, the best tweet... I saw was the Mets are accusing Joe Musgrove of cheating. So it was you Darvish and the entire Braves pitching um, roster for the last three games they played all cheating as well? No, they weren't. And uh, I'm excited for this Dodgers series. I don't know. I don't know what to expect, but I think if if this is the quality of play we bring to LA, it's going to be a fun series. Yes, it is. So James, what? Does the NLDS look like against the Dodgers? Mike Clevens will start game one. Yep. Followed by you, Darvish, Blake Snell, and Joe Musgrove. We win it in four. Win it in four. I say it's it it I I if we lose any of Musgrove them. Musgrove on the bump. Woo, I like that. I like that script a lot. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. Sorry. I was going to say, if Clevenger is Clevenger, the last Clev- the Clevenger we've seen the last couple of starts, we're going to win that game. Yep. Darvish, if he keeps being dominant, we're going to win that game. If Snell can figure it out, we can sweep the, the, um, the Dodgers. But, again, the Dodgers are a sneaky good team. So oh, I think they're sneaky. They, they won like 130 games or something like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nah, they're not really underdogs, you know. No, no, but I, I think I think our team, yes, they they beat us in the regular season. But you know what? The Dodgers don't have the passion. Ooh, hear that, Mookie Betts, passionless Betts. Yeah. Well, he's lost his passion and his hair. Wow. Uh, has he ever had hair? I can't remember him having hair. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I try not to look too closely. To Dodgers. And, That's you know, fair. So in four. I say in four. We might even sweep them. And Joe Musgrove will start game one of the next series. Mm, like that. So um, selfishly, I'm going to say sweeping them because I'll be at game three. <laughs> um, and I would love to see a sweep of the Dodgers. Uh, I I think so. It's just a matter of what team shows up. And what I mean by that is, are we going to put in those kind of great at bats? Are we going to be aggressive when we need to be aggressive? Something that I don't think we did well in the regular season was be aggressive uh, with good results. You know, I think that Scherzer game was. As good as a result as you can for being aggressive. Yes. You know, and I, I think if we're like that against Urias or Kershaw, I think good things can happen, right? I think I think that, I think, despite what I want to sweep, realistically, I think, not realistically, I think that we need to win a single game in L.A. before we return, obviously. But I think if we just, as if, we, if that happens game one, Everything becomes easier after that, right? Just, I think game one has to be a crucial must win for the Padres. Because then we can just be like, okay, we can do this. Get more confidence, get more confidence, get more confidence. And, you know, <clears throat> we just, I mean, that Mets crowd is rowdy and it is loud, right? And we did great there. So we have to keep building on that, on that, on that. And then when they get home, the Friar Faithful just freaking out for the Padres. It's that's that's how you win. Get win game one, and then the po- Friar Faithful will m- let you win the series. That's yeah. how that's how it's going to have to go. Yeah. And uh, I I'm so excited to see our Padres advance. I 
it's awesome. And you know, whatever. I'm gonna say it anyway. It's awesome not to win a shortened season. It's awesome not to win a, in weird no stadium no f- attendance games. It's awesome to win in a road series in the playoffs, a pure road series, right? Yeah. Yes. And to do it in such a dominant way, it you can't you can't tell me this is not confidence building. So, I love it. I hope Padres sleep well if they can tonight. They're not going to sleep well tonight. No. Tomorrow night, sleep well. Yes, sleep exactly. as much as you can. Um, so, uh, so I. Uh, We're man, still a man. bit shocked. I don't know. If I, 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 I don't know. This I, is just nuts. It's so. What's going to happen is I'm going to watch the condensed game tonight, and I'm like, oh my gosh, this happened. <laughs> Yeah, I forgot about that. Yes, yes. Oh, yes. like that's right. I'm gonna. I'm. It's gonna be. Not. I didn't think we we're gonna lose. I just. I just didn't know what. I didn't know the moxie of the group under this much pressure. And I would. I like what I see. Moxie is always fun to watch. Joe Musgrove has moxie out the wazoo. Yeah, that dude is. We we're, we're trying to think of what should his next beer be called? Yeah. Hot ear, flaming ear. John Boy has shirts out already, of course. Conspiracy, conspiracy is pretty funny. But I think Moxie is a great. <laughs> oh, yeah. I right, man. Man, oh, My man. My goodness. If this, I mean, I, if this is the kind of team that can sh- turn around from a bad loss, I don't know, man. Why Why not us? Why not us? Exactly. Why not? I, this is exactly what I'm saying all year. Yeah. Now, uh, before we leave, yeah. there were other playoff games. <laughs> it's true. There were other playoff games. So, it seemed uh, like last week, but they, were, does, they, they all ended yesterday. <laughs> we were the only game that lasted three, uh, the, th- the whole series. Only series that lasted all three games. Yep. So uh, how's your bracket looking, Joey? Pretty bad. I have one, success, two successful ones. The San Diego Padres and the Seattle Mariners. <laughs> How how are you doing? I have three successful. Yeah, ones. I know, I know, I know. The Wait. only only one I got wrong was the Phillies beat the Cardinals. Cardinals were not. Yeah, weren't weren't much of a threat, were they? No, they weren't. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So you're currently beating me by one. This game becomes way easier to track after this next round. But yes, it is. Yeah. Uh, now all the games start on Tuesday. And we're gonna see some. We're gonna see some fun games. And I, I think, man, I, I, I really hope that next time we, I, I, I think we're gonna see. I think we're gonna see the most competitive Padres baseball we've seen in the past twenty five years. I agree. I know that's obviously not saying much because we haven't been in the playoffs that often, but like. This team is better than a 2006 team. It's better than a 2005 team. It's better than a 2020 team from a, from a pitching perspective, obviously. And I think we might see some really fun baseball. And I really, I, I yearn for the division to be won, the division series to be won at Petco. I do too. I want that so badly. And I want to see, yeah, I want to see it. And, you know, it's, there are still players in this team that have not woken up. Jake Cronenworth, Juan Soto, could you have more power, please? You know, I, I think there's still room for improvement to get better and better. And it's I'm just Drury's going to take Kershaw deep twice. Ha Sung Kim has great numbers in Kershaw. He does. From a power perspective. I don't know. It's going to be a fun game. It's going to be a fun series. I'm excited for it. I hope our boys in the brown and gold have some fun tonight. And they rest up on their on their big long flight tomorrow, and they sleep well tomorrow night. Yeah, they've earned it. Despite what you might hear or read, they earned it cleanly. I will say this again: they hit four home runs off Max Scherzer. They, Joe Musgrove, Hader, and Suarez only allowed two base runners in Game Three. That is a team that is just so much better than you. Yes. There's no way to cut it. 
and and I encourage everyone to look up. Joey showed me this a great clip of Buck Show Walter. <laughs> what do you gonna do now, Buck? <laughs> <laughs> it, back when Buck blew another playoff game in 2016, some guy yells at him. It's great. I might add the audio. And uh, I don't really want to dive into how they manage the game, but like they also like they they also but Mets like but Coach Walter did not set himself up for success in this series. I think I agree. I, but you know, at the end of the day, it's like it is what G- it is. Game two, they threw everything they had at us. Yeah, Degrom came in, and everyone thought his finger was going to fall off. They had Diaz pitch two and a half innings to shut us down. Adovino. 30 yeah. pitches in the ninth, yeah. They're the three, the two best relievers and their best starter. They threw everything they had at us. I just don't think, I don't know. Obviously, I don't think that's a good idea. But, you know, you know, it's... Uh, what are you going to do now, Buck? You're going to lose. You're going to go, you're going to lose, buddy. And then the next time we're going to say, what are you going to do now, Dave? Hopefully, you're going to lose. <laughs> he is going to lose. There's no way. There's no way. The, the thing about the I Dodd- wrote the bracket down. I know. The thing is about the Dodgers, Yeah, I am so looking forward to seeing how they screw up mm-hmm. because they celebrate Choketober every year, and yep. it's always great to see. It's always rewarding, and I'm looking forward to seeing how they screw up this year. And if the Phillies beat the Braves, the Potters have home field advantage. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> how crazy would it be if the Phillies and Padres are in the NLCS? How insane would that be? There's, there's must be like five percent of brackets in the world have that, right? Not, not even that many, right? I t- yeah. There's no way. But James, we're one. I'm gonna feel it more as I think about it tonight. I'm excited, man. We're gonna see some po- more Padres postseason baseball, and that's why we're fans to see this kind of action, to see these kind of performances. Joe Musgrove etched himself in Padres glory, and I can't wait to see what other things will happen. Neither can I. Until next time, James, go Padres. Go Padres. What are you going to do now?